So let's learn Death Letter Blues. So we're going to get straight into it. We're in open G tuning. I'll flash it up. We'll look at the basic bit behind the singing. I'll show you a few solos. I'll do a little bit of history of the song at the end. Let's look at the sections where we're backing up the singing. It goes something like this. And you can play that as the intro for as long as you want. So what is that? You're playing the third fret on the, the fat string and you're snapping the string. You'll hear Sunhouse do this, Charlie Patton, Tommy Johnson, they all like to snap the string. You think, uh, you know, funk bass and Flea and Larry Graham and all that lot, but no, it goes back to the 20s and the 30s. So you've got that third, third fret, fat string. Then you play the open fifth string. Then you slide down on the third string from about fret two to fret three. Then you play open, you play that third string open. Yeah. Then you slide on the top string to fret five. As I, as I do that slide, and I play that, that um, fourth, uh, third string open, I'm also playing the, uh, the fifth, the third string open, I'm playing the fifth string open. I think sometimes I'm pinching the two. Good. So that's basically your intro. And then when he starts singing, I got a letter this morning. So what he's doing there, he's doing the snap again, then he's doing the fifth string open. Now sometimes you see him, he just plays this third fret on the third string. Sometimes he plays um, the third fret on the second string and the third string. And I'm also putting in the, uh, the fifth string. I got a letter this morning, how do you reckon it rains? Said hurry, hurry, the girl you love is dead. So there's four of those. And then he's got this, this way of, you kind of slide, you often slide in or slide in from like um, one fret down. So we're going to the fifth fret and we're doing a bar, just a, a line across maybe the top four strings. So that's a very standard thing in open G. You'll hear loads of Robert Johnson songs do this, Charlie Patton songs do this. Sometimes they do like little runs down, but I think what someone else does on the, 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 the live versions, he does this. Then he goes back to that intro lick twice. Then he does the same thing as we did there. He does it at the seventh fret now. So that's like your five chords. Because we're in open G, you know, you've got to think that you've got like a G chord. That's like a G7 chord. When he's singing, G chord. Then when we go there, we're doing a C chord. And then we make it a C7 by putting our finger on that. Uh, we've got four frets up on the top string. It's quite a stretch, even when you've got a slide on. so you can hear all the bits in um, relation. I got a letter this morning, how do you reckon it read? Say hurry, hurry, the girl you love is dead. I got a letter this morning, I said how do you reckon it read? It said now hurry, hurry, 
because the girl you love is dead. You know I picked up my suitcase. So before I show you all the some solos and some variations to make some interesting arrangements, now's a good time to say if this is of use, you want to learn about blues and history, like, subscribe, comment. It really helps the channel spread and more people see it. Help me and Jack, the washboard resonators. Go to the description, join our mailing list, buy a t-shirt, CD, buy us a coffee. It really, really helps and it's much appreciated. Sunhouse will do some sort of um, 12 fret slides, which is a very Delta bluesy kind of thing. Now to get that Sunhouse sound, if you play it perfectly and you play the slide completely in line with the frets, you get a very nice sound. But if you listen to Sunhouse, you watch him when he's playing. And his kind of hands doing this. Um, what you'll, what you, to get that sun house sound, what you'll see is that because he's just his technique's bad and he's probably a bit arthritic because all that footage is, you know, he's an old man in the 60s. He's, he's in about his 60s then. Um, and he's, he's not working as well. What you see is when he comes for a slide, he comes right in at, a, at an angle like, like this. But can you see that? And this is how you get that sound. Because those notes are technically like not quite in tune with each other. It's a lot, I mean, I love this. I do this now on other songs. I twist the slide like so it's wrong. And it's a good sound. So that's the first thing. You can just do some... You sing two or three verses and then... That's an house thing. There's really swooping slides that are sort of technically out of tune by bending the slide. Into a seventh chord now from a major chord. So I'm just playing the top, so I'm playing the open strings again. I'm playing the uh, third fret and top two strings. That's making it a G7 chord now. Then you're going to go to the C chord, so you can, you can play that as a uh, just a bar. Then I'm using that, that riff. I'm just using that thing on the fourth string. So that's a really easy way to sort of play a very simple solo. interesting than that solo variation. How about this? How about going up again high? Now there's a live version on I think from German TV where he, he uses that riff to, to finish the song and I use the same riff to finish but I also put it into the solo without slowing down at the end like he does. So what is that riff? So we're, gonna, we're doing that high out of tune some mouse thing where you bend the slide kind of wrong. Fret the top string. Open. So we've got the fifth fret. Open. Third fret. Second fret. Open on the top string. Then we're going to go to the third fret on the second string. So third fret on the uh, second string. Open on the first. Second, open, third. Oops.
Johnson riff that, isn't it? So uh, I don't know if you caught that. You should be able to see from that. If you can play the, the normal singing bit, you should be able to figure out what I just did then. But yeah, then at the end there, so uh, using that. So there I'm on the, uh, the third string. And I'm just going from about fret five to fret seven to... So there's some um, solo ideas, and you you know mix and match. If you if you're quite new to this stuff, then just maybe work out a solo where you work out some simple bits. And then on the next time you do a solo, put in some, uh, or even that. Put that in. Or put, put those fingered chords in. The ending that sonata does sometimes. I do it. Uh, I just do maybe six of those big slides. I slowed down and then I just play that last note as a slide. And sometimes, depending on the gig, you can do like a little, you know. thing on at the end works nice so i promised you some history of the song i've actually found this song really difficult i always assumed that this song was one of the ones he recorded for paramount in 1930 um but looking into it i believe it was first recorded actually in 1965 after like he was rediscovered so and i've read here he, like hearsay to say that he actually came up with this song in the 30s but never recorded it until the 60s i'm not really sure um, what's interesting about this, if that's true and it wasn't recorded until 1965, it's probably one of the most iconic uh, Delta Blues songs now because of YouTube, because that video has millions of views and it's the one that most people refer to when they learn Delta Blues guitar and slap guitar. People talk to me at gigs all the time about, you know, um, Death Letter Blues because of YouTube and that footage and how haunting and amazing Sunhouse House singing is. So it's interesting, isn't it, isn't it, that in the modern times, one of the most iconic Delta Blues songs never was a Delta Blues song. It was recorded by a man who'd been living in New York for about 30 years, working as a, I think it was a janitor, wasn't he? He was rediscovered and it was recorded in the 1960s, you know, when a load of uh, young sort of, um, sort of liberal youths kind of went and got him into a recording studio and got him loads of coffee house gigs. And um, it's now backtracked as being this Delta Blues song. Um, I love Sun House. And one more note about this song, I think, which is that if you are going to learn this song, one of the best things you can do is take any version of it. And I would, and I did this um, about maybe a year or two back, and it was brilliant. I worked out on the guitar every vocal inflection, and there's so many variations in this vocal inflection, and tried to match them with my 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 voice as well. So when I do this live now, I go all over the place vocally. It's really helped my singing, and it's really. I mean, I was doing a bit of a joke. Sunhouse impression early in, but like, like, to make this interesting, it's about that kind of, he was, you know, he was a preacher. It's about getting into that preacher thing where the, the, the melody is set, but it's, it changes and it shapes, shapes different. And the, the syncopation in the singing, the phrasing in the singing keep, keeps you interested all the time. Sunhouse to me is like, as much as you want to learn the guitar, put as much time into actually working out the vocals, transcribing them, um, if you want to be a blues singer it's just as important it should be and I honestly think to me the Sunhouse I think Robert Johnson I think Big Bill Brunsey 
Um, Memphis Mini, I'd probably put in there. Uh, to me, the, the four of the old blues singers that you really should like be listening to and studying because they all are great singers. They kind of pitch perfect and um, really expressive. Um, and I think, if I'm honest, I think Sunhouse is the most interesting of all of them because he's got these little inflections. That, it's not until you really try and work them out. These little microtones where he'll go down notes, but only by like little quarter tones. And when you, once you hear it and you try and work it out, it really, really, really opens your ear up to like a certain finesse and a certain way of communicating. I'm going to stop talking. Like, subscribe, comment. Help Washboard Resonators in all the ways that you can. Bye for now, everybody. Don't be a dick.